It's the Ticket Plug. We've been running an online ticket business for over a decade, and now we've created an easy way for you to do the same thing through our private ticket resale community. Joining our community will give you a way to flip your bread and generate profit income consistently. We provide you with all the tools, training, and resources needed to start your life-changing online ticket business. Zero experience needed. To join our ticket resale community, go to theTicketTrap.com. Again, go to theTicketTrap.com. That's theTicketTrap.com. The United Spot. Let's get the United Spot in the building. And then we're gonna get my brother EJ. Let's get Eric John. Eric Johnson in. Let's get let's get Eric first and then we'll get the United. Eric, what's up, brother? EJ, what's up? I'm good, man. How are you, brother? I'm doing good, man. That last white bitch you came in here. I wanted to give one of those uh black dynamite black this boy tasting pimp slaps because <laughs> he was trying to be real flirty and shit. And I was like, nah, nigga, we ain't falling for that. We ain't real. Tim Scott Buck to be ass out here. You know, he out here marrying flat chested white women and shit. And for that last dude that came up here, he was he was on some we are the world type shit. You know what yeah. you need to do? You need to run them damn checks. And that last dude you was talking to, the crystal meth definitely got to him. And I don't know if he was overdosing off his talking points, but you was giving that man the business. So all I got to say is keep up the good work and keep doing what you do, bro. No doubt, brother. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Oh, man. Shout out. We got a lot of people in here, man. Shout out to everybody in here. We got um, almost 1,300 people in the building in the middle of the night. Much respect to you guys. By the way, the movie Microphone Check, the uncolonized version, is um, on microphonecheck.com. Y'all can get that now or you can get it at Amazon. Phenomenal, phenomenal movie. Microphone check. The premiere movie about the true origins of hip hop culture. Get that right now at microphonecheck.com. And also, if you're in LA, join me this Saturday at the beautiful Hidden History Museum. We have September Soul Saturday, where we're going to have complimentary dinner, drinks, comedy We've got a lot of great comedians a lot of mingling networking it's going to be a nice vibe and i'm going to be there join me join my brother Dwan b comedian freeze love is going to be there it's going to be a nice vibe and go to hiddenhistorymuseum.com to get your tickets for that ladies and gentlemen united you in here man hey how you doing there guy um like the space. Thanks for bringing the mic up. I just wondered, um, I see you got a nice suit. Is that you in the picture there with a suit on? That is me, that is me in that nice tailored suit. That All is right, I like that. I like that. Now, I need to know something here. Yeah. How much money do you need? Um, we're going to yeah. need a foundation of black Americans. We're going to start off at $20 trillion. That's $20 trillion, dollars, right? And you're <laughs> expecting a cut of this and uh, you want a part of this too. So what are you thinking like average? Like uh, all you guys, like what do you think is going to be average out to each person? Oh man, there's different ways we can do it. Starting off at around a hundred k. Starting now, off there. Now let me ask. Now let me. I don't want to talk over you here. I know you told me the rules or whatnot, but let me ask you this. All right, let's say we divvy it all up. Right, we divvy it all up. You guys deserve all this money. Right now, what is going to happen with all of this money here? You think that people that's, are going to invest it, gonna, like that's buy houses? Nobody, that's not nobody's business. Nobody asked what Native Americans, the red ones, do with their money. When the Jewish community got their money, nobody asked what they were going to do. When the Asians got their money, nobody asked what they're going to do. When these immigrants are coming over here getting all types of money, nobody's asking what they're doing with it. Don't ask us what we're doing. But I, I might buy a, a zebra and ride it to the club. I'll do whatever I want to do with it. Just give me the money that's owed. So so it's, it's not about unity with you. It's about money. That's it. That's all you want. You don't, you don't care about unity, right? What? What does unity mean? What do you unity. mean? What does unity mean? Come on. You, you got a nice suit on. You sound like you, you're educated. You, you, you know, you do a very, uh, very posh. Slow down. Oh, slow down because your stick is already getting old. Unity with who? Unity with who? I, I don't know what the stick means. I'm just talking. I'm just trying to talk to you. I mean, you do like a, a very. Slow down. It's unity with who? I'm asking. You said unity. Unity with who? Unity. With you, who? Do you know you you don't know what unity means? With who? Unity can mean a lot of different things. Humans. Un humans, like people that have skin and blood and you know, bones, brains. But livers. people 
unified with us. That's why we need reparations. No, there is no us though. That's the thing here. You 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 fallen into you fallen victim to this uh, stereotype that we need to like separate the humans. That's your problem, and you've sir, got caught up in it. Sir, I, I apologize for you know you're easily manipulated. Sir, you separated from Italy or Sicily, wherever your family fled from. How come you're not unified with the people over there in Italy? I'm I'm unified with everybody. I don't got no problems with nobody. I take care of myself and my family, and I'm happy for everything I got. I don't sit here complaining and ask for money from people that don't really need because, it. Because you don't deserve because you don't deserve money for anything. What did I work, you? I work hard for my money. I do everything I possibly can for my my family and anybody I can help out with too as well. I don't I don't sit there and beg people for money. But you you fled from your family fled from damn Italy and came over here begging. So yeah, y'all do. Y'all came over here begging. Because you didn't have anything in Italy, sir. So what are you talking about? Y'all fled across the whole ocean to get the hell over here begging. Are you, are you muting me on purpose or is that something that you're doing just to shut me up? I don't understand. But you're not going to talk over me. You're talking about begging. You come from a, a culture of beggars who came begging from a whole different country, sir. Oh, you're, you're, entitled, you... you're entitled to your opinion. Absolutely. No, that's not but when, but... that's not an opinion. That's a fact. Your your family came over here fleeing from Italy, begging. So don't tell me about you don't know what begging is. I, I you... disagree. I disagree. But I I mean, as you sit there with your nice facts suit and facts are facts, sir. You came over here begging from Italy. So you're talking about an opinion. That's not an opinion. Yeah, nobody in my family came over here begging from Italy. I think you got that one wrong here. But I mean, I do like you. So how much did that? They did. They did. And you you, you keep trying to change the subject with your stick and it's not working sir so yeah you, a beggar is not going to tell me about begging i'm not begging i'm demanding what's owed to me you weren't owed anything you came over here and ate off foundational black americans so you should be thanking us sir that you had a lane to come flee to right so if 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 you would let me talk here without mute me here, thank you. Right, but but yeah, I don't want to hear your stick though i see that you keep calling but, it stick i don't understand right, so what but, what are you doing Keep talking about you. You got a nice shoot over there, and that's very corny. You're trying to get into some corny 4chan trolling, and I'm not allowing you to degre to degenerate the conversation into unfunny trolling. See, because so people anybody so anybody that has a different opinion than you is a troll, right? Are you yeah, gonna do a funny voice again? Or because you're talking about suits and, and it's, it's already corny, so I'm not gonna even let you embarrass yourself with cornball nonsense. Because when you, um start talking about real stuff, then you guys start wanting to troll and deflect. So we're not you, letting that. You guys? You guys, you, many of you suspected white supremacists because the way you're trying to troll, I can, I just, I suspect you could possibly be a white supremacist. Not saying oh, you. Everybody's a white supremacist. Not, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's just, I mean, in your definition of a. I suspect you could be, sir. But I know that you are a fleer. And from your voice, you sound like you fled from Italy. That's what I'm saying. I didn't flee from anywhere. I'm born and raised. Yeah, you, yeah, you, you, your family fled. Okay, and, and that's not racist at all. But thank you very much. Uh, so, what is your what is your definition of a white supremacist? I didn't say anything about anybody's race. I mean, that's not race. That's a culture thing. You came from a culture of fleeing, sir. If you were in a if you were in a canoe right now, you'd be in reverse. You keep backpedaling here. I asked you, what is your I've definition of a white supremacist? Sir, a white supremacist is a person who's classified as white who believe through speech, thoughts, and actions that they be in a superior. What's that? What are you doing back there, sir? And you and you feel like you're inferior to the white supremacist, correct? Uh -huh. First, you're going to have to put up the ragu jars. I don't know what's all that noise in the background. Those so, are my two dogs enjoying life. Are, are they okay. racist too or what? Okay. I don't understand. Well, stop, letting, stop letting them eat, eat that chicken tetrazzini or whatever the hell they're eating back there. And good Lord. But listen, um, what you do to replace the system of white supremacy with the system of justice. And you're, in, in your mind, justice is only a paycheck, correct? Um, that that was be that would be the first part of justice reparations to foundation of Black America. Okay, let me ask you this: You get paid, right? You're trillions and trillions of dollars, and you do what it what you want, right? None of our business, right? Right. Then what? Then you like give the white people a pass, and you stop being like all mean to us. Is that what it is? Mean? 
How, now, how are black people mean to white people? We're not mean to you, you guys. Degrade, you degraded every single white person and white person that came up here, and I know you've been doing it for a long time. I don't. Hey, I'm not blaming you. You can do whatever now, the hell you want. Projecting. I've been nothing but polite to everybody who called up. Now you're practicing white supremacy by being deceptive. I'm. I'm. I'm even polite to you. No, I'm not. You. You. You have anything but polite to me. Very polite. I've been polite to everybody that has. You've been called. making fun of my family. You've been making fun of Ragu Josh. You've been making fun of my poor dogs over here. They're sitting here crying in the corner. Here. You see? I mean, you're not. I mean, you're, I, you seem. Sir, 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 I'm just talking history. You were up here talking about begging, but you come from a culture of begging, where your family had to beg to get over here from Italy, sir. That's what I'm saying. I'm. Just now, how do you know I came from Italy? Because of that accent. See, that's what I'm talking about. You're sitting there projecting here. You're sitting there just uh, assuming. That's assuming. an Italian. How yeah, do you how do you know it's Italian? What if I'm just a guy that just likes to talk like this? Right. You. That's what I'm saying. You might be a goofball troll. Either one. That's a deceptive thing, which is kind of common of white supremacists. You have this thick Italian accent. I'm assuming that your family's from Italy. That's what it sounds like. Now you might be doing extras with the 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 accent, but I'm pretty sure you came from Italy. That's a pretty spot on Italian accent. I've been to Italy, right. and I love Italian people. I love them. They're real good people. That's that's great. I got no qualms with you at all. All I'm trying to ask you is this: you get your money, you do what it what you will. None of my business. Then what? Then you get the hell out of my face and go make you some more spaghetti. That's so what you, you so so basically what you're saying is you're not looking for unity. You're looking for a paycheck, and that's the end of the day. We're not unified now. What's stopping us from being unified now? The government you, and weak minded people. That's why. Um, no, that's you you having we, your neighborhoods were called little Italy. You cornered yourself off in your own little neighborhood. Weak minded you know? people believe everything. Unity, you had your, you guys come over and get your own little segregated enclaves. The Italians were some of the main anti black races in places like New York and Chicago. You went out of your way to separate yourself and then get with the Anglo whites to denigrate black people. You never wanted unity, sir. Let's not play that game. So you're putting me in a place that, oh, wait, I forgot. I forgot your definition of somebody that wasn't there as a white supremacist. I got you. Right, right, because you Italians, and I'm assuming you're Italian, you were the main ones practicing white supremacy after we helped you when you got here, by the way. It was a lot of black people helping the Italians because you weren't considered white for a long time. But the minute they allowed you be to become white, you started practicing anti-black racism. Even with the mafia, you would flood our neighborhoods with drugs and all types of vices that undermined our community. So, yeah, you don't get to holler about no damn unity with all the stuff you've done to our community, sir. So let me ask you this, because um, I saw a recent post you did with the NFL player who was doing 125 miles an hour in a probably 15 mile an hour zone. Um, and you seem to defend this man. Um, what was your basis of defending this man who was clearly, clearly, um, I mean, he looked like he was doing pretty bad with that uh, car that probably could have bought four houses. Um, how exactly could you defend that guy for the way he was acting? and um, not following instructions. I just want to know your I, opinion on that. Proud black man, and he made your fellow white supremacists look like the punk-ass cowards they were because a black man who's winning, he's in an oppressive system and still drives around in a fly car, <laughs> getting accolades all over the world, getting hundreds of millions of dollars, the only way they can oppress him is by using a cowardly white supremacist system that's militarily backed where they can gang up on him and dogpile him with the United States military system backing them up. That shows the cowardice of white supremacy. So I'm very proud of that brother for standing up like a black man and keeping his head up. And then after he got gaffled up by your fellow cowards, he went and won a game and held his head up high. So well. No, that's, that's, that's great. And, and you know what? You're entitled to your opinion. Let me ask you this. How do you feel that you need, in order to gaffle up a black man, you need a whole military system in order to get you a, quote, win over a black man? How does that make I, you I don't. I don't speak for anybody in uniform because I'm not wearing a uniform. But you justify what happened to that man. So how do you feel having to justify cowardly actions like that in order to feel systematically superior? How does that feel?
Well, here's the thing. Um, there is a law called um, um, follow instructions, basically, right? So if you get pulled over and somebody asks you... Um, no, I don't even want to hear all of this white supremacist babble because you're not obligated to sit here and keep your windows down. What you're about to do is start lying. You don't have to have your windows down. He rolled his windows up and they pulled some I'm white and I say so. What law is there to roll your window down when somebody's talking to you? He gave those officers his ID and registration. He's not under any obligation other than that. So the amount of speed that he was recklessly driving, that was okay, though? Okay. Well, that's what you do. You give them a ticket. You don't put people in chokeholds. Actually, actually, 100 miles an hour is a felony. No, you, you give them a ticket. No, it's a felony. You giving them a ticket. A hundred miles an hour is a felony. Then how come they didn't charge him with a felony? Um, I don't know. I'm not the police officer. No coal have to do with that, man. Why are they choking him from the back like cowards and he's already handcuffed? Well, I mean, he's, you know, I, I'm not, like I said, I'm not in their training program. I have no idea what they do. That's all the I point. know is that if I owned a car like that and I was making all that kind of money, I sure as hell wouldn't be jeopardizing my freedom and everyone around me by driving but 125 miles an hour. You would never do that. You you don't have the kind of talent and skill as black men. You how does have. it take a how does it take talent to drive like oh. an absolute moron? So you're you're saying that he should have followed instructions, following was, the law of the speed limit? Absolutely. So right. So yeah. So people like Ashley Babbitt, who ran the Capitol building, she wasn't following the instructions either. So what happened to her was justified too, right? I don't know how you could even compare that. That's pretty disrespectful, to be honest. Really? Yeah. She lost her life. Yeah. She, she wasn't lost her life. No, no. You said if you follow instructions, things wouldn't happen. So she should have followed instructions too, right? That has, that has absolutely no basis to this argument at all. That's your argument, sir. That's your argument. You justify what happened to that black man saying that he wasn't following instructions and he broke the law. Ashley Babbitt broke the law. Did, did they kill Did they kill that driver of that car, that football player who makes millions of dollars? Did they kill him? No. No. no they, so, so you're going to sit there and you're going to absolutely, you're going to sit there and disrespect no. this woman and compare no. a fucking football player to <laughs> Ashley Babbitt? Are you fucking insane? Yeah. Yes. Are you fucking insane? You the one who said following instructions. No, 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 no. You you missed the entire point there, my no, friend. I didn't. You no. do not kill somebody no. for something like that. Absolutely but, not. And then Oh, you were the one saying, Well, if you better there's something called following instructions. Yeah. And they gaffled this man up and you justified it, threw him on the ground, choked him, and you said that was okay because he wasn't following instructions. So that means Ashley Babbitt getting that hot lead from the brother who was giving her lawful commands. She wasn't following instructions and she got what she got. And according to your logic, that's justified, right? Absolutely not. That's not even what I said. That's not, you, you, you come up with your own little uh, wacko fucking ideas. And if you're going to impersonate my voice, at least try a little who are a white supremacist hypocrite then? I don't believe in racialized justice. If uh, justice is pertinent for one person, it should be pertinent for everybody. So if that brother should have been gaffled up over a traffic stop because he didn't follow instructions by your own logic, Ashley Babbitt should have got that hot lead because she didn't follow instructions. You, so you have he, evil thoughts, my friend. You have very evil thoughts. Sir, that's you. You want to try to pick and choose. You're comparing a football player who got yeah. uh, arrested for speeding over way over the speed limit to a woman who was murdered. Yeah, for not following instructions. That's she not even a comparison. Law. That's not it's even a comparison. Breaking the law and not following instructions. It's not it a was, comparison. Do you understand what 2 plus 2 is? Yeah, she was breaking the law. Absolutely. Oh, my gosh. This was not breaking the law. Okay, so in your in, in your what? in your in your in your opinion, then then he should have he should have been shot too. Was she not breaking the law? No, he should have been. He wasn't breaking the law like that. 
He was uh, in a traffic violation situation. So you're telling me that doing this, you, you just won't even answer this because you're just trying to stay on topic in your nice suit there. He, he, he was over 100 miles an hour, which is a felony against the law. It's a felony. Jeopardizing was, the lives of a lot of people. Was, no, nobody's life was in jeopardy. He was pulled over. And How do you know that? He was doing over 100 miles an hour. Hurt. Nobody got hurt but him. Oh, so what? gosh. Felony. Nobody got hurt but him. Nobody got hurt but Ashley Babbitt. Ashley Babbitt was in the middle of a damn insurrection at oh, the Capitol building, which is highly illegal. She was building, sir, and running up on a cop who was yelling at her to stop. So, so you, so you're literally comparing Ashley Babbitt to a football player. Logic states that she got what she deserved because you said Tyreek Hill got what he deserved. So that logic applies across the board, right? This conversation showed me everything I need to know about who you are. Everything I needed to know about you. You're a hypocritical white supremacist. Now take your ass on in there and eat you some chicken marsala. All right. Yeah. Get we'll pray for you. Yeah, yeah. Don't pray for me. Get your ass off here. All right. You sat up here trying to justify what happened to the brother, but when the white woman don't follow instructions, oh, oh, oh that's different. That's different there. That's different there. No, it ain't different. What are you what are you talking about? What do you mean? Bada bing, bada boom. She got bada binged and bada boom with that hot lead for not following instructions like you said. You understand? That's what happened. Sir Major, what's up? Boy. Hey, hey, what's up, Tariq? How you feeling, man? I'm good. How you doing, brother? Man, you, you're you're a better man than me. <laughs> <laughs> what I tell you is, man, just looking at this this situation from a police brutality standpoint, uh, these officers uh, in question are going to be no no doubt. There's going to be a lawsuit. Um, yeah. What they did was excessive force. Is what we call it in, in, in my field. It's called excessive force and unreasonable force, right? So excessive force is when you you overdo it. And a reasonable force is, let's just say this was a case where there was grounds for force, but you just, you go exceedingly above. Uh, there was no need for force at all. Um, Mr. Hill was not uh, resistant. He was not a combative. He was not aggressive. Um, he may have been agitated, rightfully so, uh, but he did not do anything that would present a danger to himself or law enforcement. And this idea that he was driving 125 or 120 miles per hour. It's completely bogus, okay? We saw right. on tape when the officers pulled him over. The officers didn't even have to use that much speed, right, to try to catch up to him, right? And then also what we know to be true is that there was no speedometer. So if you're going to try to clock somebody at 100-something miles per hour, you have to use working, uh, calibrated um, a speedometer, okay? That wasn't present. It was not used at all. He's going to beat these cases or these charges. The tickets will be thrown out. There's going to be a hefty lawsuit paid. And they're going to make an example out of these officers. And then on top of that, right, we saw that other black NFL players for the Miami um, Dolphins were also accosted and arrested, right, for yeah. simply trying to hold these officers accountable. I guarantee you, and this is what we're going to do, Tomorrow, we're going to be filing public records requests. We're going to be demanding these four officers' public record files, their personnel files. We want to see how many other complaints for excessive force uh, were, 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 were filed. Uh, we're going to be looking at internal-based complaints, uh, whether these officers were discipline, uh, disciplined by, uh, by internal affairs for maybe insubordination, um, you know, bad behavior or whatever. So we're going to be looking at this stuff. Uh, and, and, and everyone who shared the video, uh, I saw the video first through you. So you posted that. Uh, yeah. And uh, after you posted it, I think a lot of people posted it. And so yeah. what we have to do in this moment as a land is we've got to continue to stay on these people's bumper. Thank you. Yes, Thank you, brother. Yeah. And I don't I don't think he was driving no damn 120 miles, but I don't even believe that because there was traffic going there. And that's like in the middle of Miami. So, yeah, they were. I, I don't see, there was a lot of traffic on that street. So how are you going to be going 120 miles per hour on that busy ass street? I don't know how that works. Uh, Reptile, hop on, man. How you doing, Tariq? It's crazy too, mate. They don't give him a chance. Pull him out like that. 
treating him like a goddamn criminal. Unbelievable, mate. What's the go yeah. with that? I don't know, man. So what's going on with you, Reptile? You know me, brother. Looking at you, humans fighting with each other as we work from behind the scenes, controlling oh, yeah. things. Oh, yeah, you're the, you're one hey, of but do you know what? I did want to talk about oh, white... Wait. You're one of those reptilian humanoids that's really controlling the Illuminati. Are you one of those type of things? 100%, mate. I come from a European bloodline. I live down under, but my bloodline comes from Europe, mate. Hybrid reptilians, mate. We're controlling everything. So, yeah, when do y'all have the Illuminati meetings? Certain dates, mate. Certain dates. All oh. Hallows' Eve, the third Friday the 13th. There's other dates as well. But I wanted to talk to you, Tariq. You were talking about white coochie, my good brother. Yeah. Hey, somebody was telling me, is it true you're married to a white woman? Yes, she's a white reptilian. Ah, so, you know what you're looking for. Hey, how does that link in, bro? You're, you know, you're with the brothers and I, stuff, but isn't that you being a bit of a traitor to your race no. if you're with a white woman? No, because what I'm doing, I'm tearing up that white reptilian cooch to stop the white reptilian bloodline. So now, <laughs> so it's warfare. It's, I'm doing it for a purpose. I'm doing it for the hood. So. <laughs> I'm hearing you, brother. You You're me? a what? Yeah, that's right, mate. Can't keep away from that white coochie. I'm reptilian cooch at a time. I'm waging warfare on that pussy. <laughs> hey, once you go reptilian, you never go back, Tariq, and you know that for a fact, brother. Hey. Once you lay with lice, you never think twice. You dig? So that's what I do. <laughs> Thank you so much, Reptilian. <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay. Let me... Junior, what's up, man? Junior, you here? Junior, 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 hop on, man. Okay, Junior, his phone is tripping. Junior, where you at, man? I'm trying to give you a chance to speak your mind, player. Shout out to everybody in here, man. Go to microphonecheck.com to get that film, Microphone Check. Phenomenal movie. Junior, I got to get you out of here. You're not saying nothing, sir. Um, and also join me at the Hidden History Museum this Saturday. We got a great event happening. Go to Hidden historymuseum.com Lisa what's up Lisa Lisa you turn your microphone on ma'am what's up Lou you don't sound like a Lisa nope uh just that's just a uh, name you know it doesn't matter yeah yes well you why are you a man catfishing people <laughs> no, I'm not doing. I'm not doing that. I, the name is actually Lisa. It ends with an N, but I'm kind of too lazy to just add the N and let be. Uh, you know, like let people. You know, think whatever they want to think. We should be. I, I think you're using your account to catfish people. You're trying to no, get I don't do that. No, I'm. I'm actually. I have a lot of followers. I write a lot of uh, a lot about a lot of things. Um, you know, you things about consciousness about uh, reality of um, the real world uh, we live in. You know, all the things, you know, like... Uh, Where from? Where all you the, from? Yeah. Where are you from, Lisan? Well, um, there is something. Uh, I don't share any kind of uh, personal information. I'm sorry about that. But, but because but, uh, of the things I talk about... Uh, yeah. Oh, that, because your accent is out of, out of this world. I just want to know who I'm talking to with this accent. That's all I want to know. <laughs> What part yeah, of sure. Planet? You know, like uh, uh, maybe you know, like next space. You know, we could talk about that. Um, okay, well, just you know, I'm really enjoying you know the thing. Uh, you know, this is my first time here, and I really enjoyed. You know, you don't understand the rules. You know, this ain't the immigration office. Now you don't don't get to come up and babble. You all secretive. I I, I don't want to know. I don't talk about that. I don't know, dude. You you calling up? You got all of these. Taliban letters on your page. I don't know where you from, man. I, I just like to know who I'm talking to. I just like to know who I'm talking to. You know, you're not gonna breeze over that. Who the hell are you, brother? Your name is Lisa. You got all this weird writing. I don't know where your accent is from. You sound like Gru from Despicable Me. I don't know what you are. All right, uh, just a second. Just a second. Uh, first of all, from? stop bullshit. Where are you from? <laughs> what <the fuck> from? <laughs> Just second, you know. Uh, uh, first of all, you know the I, I you know I speak Arabic, 
All right. Okay. And so that's, you know, what you read on my page, but I write in English too. So I'm okay. What part of the Middle East are you from, sir? Um, look, it, it's kind of complex. Gonna... It's complex. You know, it's a long it's story. Are you a secret agent? Are you double O musty? What are you, where the fuck are you from? Why are you so secretive? What is, what's all of this? Why you got to be so secretive about who you are and where you from, dude? Okay, I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. All right? Why? It's listen, just too much, you know? If I... Listen, listen, you yeah. drive somewhere, dude. It ain't that damn serious for you to be this damn secretive. It is. You it is. If you understand who I'm at, I like who... Deliver Postmates for somebody. I cannot tell you I'm mean, uh, undercover. You're not undercover, man. You deliver Uber Eats, my dude. So you don't have to be so secretive. Why are you so secretive? What is this about? Lisan, what's up, man? Talk to so me. So the, the mute, you know, takes a while. Look, yeah, I, know it. I, I think, look, I think, you know, you, you're trying to figure out uh, where am I from, you know, but the thing is, okay, I'm going to say it, you know, it's kind of a, kind of a big thing. I know most of uh, the uh, who's here are not going to believe this, this, but I'm Jesus coming again, you know, I came again. And I have the proof, yeah. Ass off my phone. Good Lord. W women, let me ask y'all women. Do y'all meet these kind of dudes at the club? <laughs> women, let me talk to the women. Because, God damn, that shit is annoying to me. I'm a man. I can imagine women at a club and one of these dudes buy you a drink. <laughs> Do y'all have to sit up and listen to that bullshit? <laughs> I got you a Long Island iced tea. I, um, I like you. I think you're pretty. I um I want to take you to my place. I can make some baklava, and um I drive over here. I have diamonds, and I own a diamond mine. And I work for the beers. And I have a pet llama that I want to introduce you. To. You gotta hear that shit. Do y'all women? Do y'all women? That's I be feeling for women sometimes. Like God damn, women be hearing this type of shit every day. From these dudes, I can. I, I, my heart goes out to women who have to hear these dudes pull up on them with this type of babble. I'm a man, and that irritates the hell out of me. Lord, oh that babble. Well, some of the some of the sisters they'll they'll listen to it and they think they're gonna get some money out of his ass. You said you had some diamonds. Yeah, yes, yes I have a diamonds. Where them diamonds at? Oh, it's it's. I have a diamonds in my home. I got a lot of diamonds. I I I work for a diamond company. I do that for real. Me and my friend want to go by your house and see. <laughs> the sisters try to hit a lick off there. That's what all that babbling. You got to fight through the babbling though. Shit. God damn, man. Lord, Lord, Lord. Shout out to everybody in here. Where are my West Coast people? Shout out to all my West Coast people. There's a heat wave out here on the West Coast. And because there's a heat wave, that means a lot of people are getting musty. And because a lot of people are getting musty, people are getting the root work deodorant. So shout out to everybody for getting the root work deodorant. By the way, I'm looking at the room. Um, this dude here, this Kevin dude, we don't, I don't need you streaming our stuff. This guy. Hi, Kevin Mackey. I see you down here. This guy has been going in spaces recording people's spaces and streaming them. I don't want you streaming my spaces, brother. That That's some weirdo shit you doing. Don't stream spaces. I don't want you streaming my space. A lot of people don't want you streaming our spaces. You do not have permission to stream my space on your channel. That's not cool. I don't know what you own. But these little, little weird cats doing little weird ass stuff. I don't know what that's about. But you do not have permission to stream my spaces, guy. 
We did get your own content and do you. All right, let's get um Ghanaian and Haitian Nick. All right, this is Ghanaian and Haitian Nick in the building. Oh, I see my brother Maverick in here. Let me get Maverick after him. Um, but Ghanaian and Haitian Nick first. Let me get Ghanaian and Haitian Nick. What's up, Nick? Oh, shoot. My bad, man. I didn't mean to request. But Tariq, what happened? Well, go ahead. Oh, oh, oh well, first of all, how's it going, man? I'm good. How you doing, brother? What's happening? Good. What happened during the convention that you had where there was a gentleman that stood up? He was arguing with you. A convention I had? No, it it's in, like, it was one of the uh, reparation thing. There was, like, a big gentleman that stood up. Did it happen weeks ago and I just happened to see it on YouTube? Oh, no, that was something that was, um, when did that happen? I think that was last year at the reparations thing in Sacramento. Um, that was somebody that people said he was some kind of federal informant or some kind of op because they just hopped up. They sat there for, like, an hour, and then when the cameras started, they jumped up yelling at folks and then turned around, talking about yelling at me, talking about, put some respect on my name. I'm like, what the fuck? Who the hell are these people? Yeah, and, like, you guys almost fought, right? There was someone holding you from... Yeah, somebody, yeah. yeah somebody was holding me, because, yeah, I, I was, yeah, I wanted to see what the temperature was. But, yeah, the people were telling me that they were on some ops. Those were some... Because that... that reparations hearing they were having a bunch of in, in informants and ops and agents in there doing things to disrupt it was we call it to get that get your hand out my pocket moments where they send people in to do things to kind of disrupt the meetings disrupt the hearings so yeah that was some old agent op shit so but we were prepared and we were already prepared we i had the whole crew up in there so it wasn't i wasn't in any kind of danger so it wasn't nothing for me no i'm glad you okay man thank you for uh allowing me dude i didn't mean to uh send it thank you Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, not a problem. Oh, yeah. They had all types of ops at these reparations things trying to disrupt them. Yeah, so we we went in there prepared. We we already knew that was going to happen. So, yeah, we were ready. It wasn't shit going to go down. I was with all the damn shits. I was with all the business. We were 100% ready. So, yeah, we knew with the reparations hearings that they were going to have people in there trying to disrupt stuff and Throw a monkey wrench in the game. So, yeah, you got to be prepared for that stuff. Maverick. What's up, brother Maverick? What's going on, brother? How you feeling? I'm good, man. How you doing, brother? Good, man. Good. I'm just, uh, I almost lost my train of thought with all these trolls in here, man. That, that's, that's just hilarious, though. Yeah, man. Well, yeah. What's going on? Uh, nothing. I just wanted to comment on a couple of things. Um, for one, the Tyreek Hill stuff. Um, people tend to forget that the police they are public servants like we pay them and i think that people like especially black people you have to remember these people serve us it's, it's supposed to be protect and serve which, yeah. which they're not doing right and yeah. that's the thing like for them to say he's doing 120 and all that bullshit like they for, for sure are about to get sued and like yeah. I, I i don't like where like they create this atmosphere where we have to be scared of police and everything else. It's like, if you know the law, like nine times out of 10, like you're going to be okay. Like just, you know, follow like, you know, the, the protocols and everything else. Don't move too fast. Cause you we already know like what the system that we're in right now. And you know, they, they have, you know, race soldiers and we already know the KKK moved into, you know, law enforcement. So that's, you know, a whole nother rabbit hole, but that, yeah. that, that's, that's the whole thing that to where like really, they're they're here to serve us don't forget that absolutely so, yeah. and then the, another thing too real quick on the immigration thing and how it correlates with the reparations so they're giving all these immigrants have you seen the um receipt where they have like thirteen thousand dollars in cash benefits and five thousand yeah. ebt and all that so they can definitely afford the the reparations last year taxpayers have spent 150 billion dollars on the uh, uh illegal immigrants so how like we gotta have money right so like they're spending all this money on the illegal immigrants giving them homes i saw a venezuelan uh, family that just got a home they're illegal so there's definitely enough bread for for you know the reparations so they always moving the goalposts on that oh yeah 
Oh yeah, and the thing, thank you so much for the call, brother. Yeah, the thing is, man, they want to get all of these um, illegals over here so they can um, pay them pennies on the dollar. They're not going to demand any corporations to um, give them the proper wages. They're not going to demand medical. Like we, you know, we we ain't going to work for peanuts. If we work for a corporation, we're going to demand, you know, pay dental, medical, vacation time, sick leave. We're going to ask for what we're supposed to get. And these corporations, they want to save money by having all of these illegals come over here and work dirt cheap, work under the table. And, you know, that's where the cor that's why the corporate entities are putting a lot of money into the Biden Kamala campaign and it, well, Kamala's campaign. The corporate entities are really pushing that line real heavy. You, you understand? That's why all of these Negroes who work for these big corporations are towing the line for the Democrats. All of these Negroes who work for these radio companies, these are the corporations that has their Negro flunkies towing the line for Kamala and the Democrats. It's a, it's a, it's a big old finesse going on, man. We don't know the beginnings of rap because as long as our music has been recording, people have been rapping. The disco DJs separated themselves from us. We were the next generation coming up with this thing and they were like, what's this little hippity hop thing? The first time I heard somebody spit a 16 over a break beat was probably Melly Mel. The Melly Mel sound that you hear today, I got that sound from Hollywood. I was doing this same form of entertainment long before it had a name. A lot of the gangs were fading out by the time hip hop came in. A lot of those gangs turned into crew. As far as influencing hip hop, I saw no Puerto Rican or Jamaican influences whatsoever. I started breakdancing in 70. When rap and hip hop was all black, it was negative. Now that it became a big phenomenon and corporately acceptable, now there's this need to take foundation of black Americans out of the creation of it and give it away to other people. And it's important for us to set the record straight.